Gali Mehta, and welcome to Careers of the Future, a show where students can hear directly from Ms. Smiley's at the leading edge of their fields about how to most effectively prepare for the future of their work. My name is Haya Panjwani. I'm on the Ms. Smiley's youth team and your host for today's episode. Today, we'll be discussing user experience with our special guest, Azmina Karimi. Azmina is a user experience designer at Audible by Amazon. She makes the Audible software easier for users to use and studies the way that users interact with Audible. Azmina, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to come and chat about UX design and hope that everyone finds it fruitful. Great, fantastic. We'll kick off with our first question. Do you mind defining what user experience is? Sure. So UX design is the things that humans like you and I interact with. It can involve anything from the spaces that we sit in to the products and services that we interact with. That can involve things like the apps that we use on our phones. It can involve kiosks that we interact with at the bank or for checking in for a flight or for a doctor's appointment. It can even involve the coffee maker that we use at home or, uh, or in other places. Um, really, UX design is the art and science of designing and thinking through every single interaction that humans deal with in their everyday lives. One example of how UX can be in action in everyday life is traveling. For instance, when you're traveling, you are going through a series of steps and interactions to get from your destination, where you are right now, to your destination, so that's your point B. For example, you might be looking for a flight online. You might want to choose a specific date or time for your flight. You might want to filter by price, find the most cost-effective option for you. You might even want to make sure that there are other people who are traveling with you. So the job of a UX designer really is to think through every single one of those use cases and interactions, make sure that it's a super smooth experience, no matter how small that detail. So if there's, an ever, if there's ever an experience that you've been frustrated with, for example, checking for a flight or being at the security gate for a flight, waiting for too long, not knowing how long that line is going to be, likely there's an opportunity for improvement of that experience and a UX designer can really offer a lot of value there. The field itself is a multitude of different disciplines. It involves design, it involves psychology, it involves technology, it even involves business. And really the job of a UX designer is to take all these elements, really observe and understand the way people work, what are their pain points, what are they finding frustrating, and turn that into design solutions and opportunities that can really help that experience um, and really help it people um, have a better and smoother experience. Some of the deliverables that are involved in UX design can be anywhere from the research observations, a research report, um, it can even be ideating design solutions, so sketching or even writing out design solutions. It can involve these maps that we call user flows, um, where it's just a very high level experience talking about how one person gets to one point of an experience to another, so how that flow of the experience works all the way to wireframes, which is sort of like a blueprint or architectural um, layout, or you can compare it to an architectural blueprint, but really just showing um, what are the exact interactions and what is the layout on that experience, especially when it comes to digital worlds. Great, that's so insightful, thank you so much. What do you do right now? And what was the journey into what you do right now? 
Currently, I'm a senior user experience designer at Audible. Um, specifically, our team works on the Audible experience on Amazon.com. So my job is to make sure that um, anyone who is interested in Audible, um, even people who are curious about it, have a good and informed experience all the way from finding out more information about it, to searching for a book, to learning more about that book, all the way through that checkout experience and even the members experience, making sure that people are getting the most out of their memberships. Really, at the end of the day, it's about making sure that people are feeling educated, people are feeling informed, and people are finding joy in their lives through the use of audiobooks. The way I got here was a really interesting journey. Uh, it actually started in high school where I found myself being super interested in a variety of courses, everything from biology to music composition to English, you name it. I, I really enjoyed it. And so I wanted to go into a field that involved my ability to practice creativity, but also find logic. Um, and UX is a field that involves both of that. So I ended up going into the communications program at Simon Fraser University in Vancouver. From there, I realized that I wanted to be a little bit more hands-on with, um, with what I did and make a more tangible impact. And so I switched into this program called the School of Interactive Arts and Technology in the same campus, just a different program. And there, I really got to um, understand what design was all about. It was a basic design foundations program, and it involved everything from learning about um, how you do design research, how you might evaluate a design, um, how you might make improvements to the design, and that entire design process as well. Um, also learning some tools and tips along the way, things like prototyping. Um, we actually made foam boards of, um, of foam keyboard models at the time. Um, so lots of different tools and, um, and thinking style in, in your toolkit. Um, while I was in school, I actually worked at the Apple Store, which I found was a great experience in learning more about UX design, every single interaction with customers and how they um, enter the store to how they leave. There's a whole series of um, interactions that we really pay attention to. So for me, that was actually a form of user research. Um, I also became very interested in the research aspect of design. So I ended up interning at Nokia and Research in Motion, where I evaluated experiences on their phones, um, such as their music apps, their ringtones apps, podcasts, understanding people's behaviors and desires around that um, to make design recommendations to really improve that experience. And then I also found the desire to go a little bit more hands-on and, and take research recommendations that I was making and put it into practice. So I ended up joining um, the ad agency, Crispin Porter and Bogusky in Boulder, Colorado after I graduated. Um, there I worked on Domino's Pizza. Uh, so if you've ever ordered pizza online, then you'll know um, you'll know that there's a whole series of interactions that happen there as well, as well as um, a, as well as a client in the dental industry um, for Aspen Dental, making appointments online easier. Um, I also then moved on to another ad agency in New York. And after that, I found a deep interest in healthcare. So I ended up joining a firm called Very Day, um, which is a design consultancy. It is now um, with McKinsey Design. And they're really focused on helping patients who are on medications for um, things like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, and stage four breast cancer. Um, have a smooth experience whenever they are on that medication. Um, so really relieve any points of anxiety at that point in the experience. Um, and then I became interested on the product side of things. So now I'm in-house at Audible working on the Amazon experience. That's incredible. What an interesting journey. Um, where do you see user experience going in the future? Well, user experience is a very unique and it's a very varied field. 
it's also it's also quite new compared to a lot of traditional disciplines like we might be familiar familiar with like law and and medicine and teaching um so there's a lot of opportunity really I would say there's there's a lot of great demand for UX, um, especially as businesses are realizing that um, a good user experience equates to good business. Um, really, that's the bottom line. If people are having a smooth experience with a product or a service, it's going to be good for the business. So. There's a lot of opportunity for that um, in different fields, whether that's in education, whether that's in healthcare, whether that's in the audiobook industry, whether that's whether that's in the food industry. People are going to want a smooth experience, so tons of opportunities. I would say right now with the pandemic, the way we live and the way we work has really changed. So that is going to afford a lot of opportunities. People have had to shift very quickly in the way that they do things. Education is happening more online in many places now. So students and faculty have had to adjust to that. Healthcare is also going digital. The way that we dine and the way that we get groceries are also increasingly digital. So tons of opportunity there to also really improve what that experience looks like. I would also say there's a lot of there's a lot of research and a lot of conversation happening around the topic of automation and artificial intelligence. More and more these days, as we see technology advance, we want to make sure that things are seamless for us and that we are going about our lives in a very efficient way. So that equates to a lot of things like smart homes, voice enabled devices like Siri and Alexa. So there is going to be a lot of opportunity to dive deeply into that space as well. And at the same time, while automation is increasingly um, becoming a more prevalent part of our lives, that also leads to a conversation of ethics and making sure that um, the experience that's being provided in a seamless way, in an automated way, is also being done in an ethical manner. So that leads to conversations like data and privacy and ensuring that the customer still has control over what they're doing. So lots of opportunities in, in the future of UX. That's really interesting to hear, Asmina. You speak a lot about ethics and user experience, and I hear that you've worked on the Ethics in Action exhibit during Diamond Ghibli. Do you mind speaking more to that? Sure, happy to. So I was really fortunate to be able to participate in this Diamond Jubilee project. And really the goal was to showcase the work and the impact of AKDN in a way that was digestible and perhaps even inspiring to members of the Jamath during the Diamond Jubilee period. Um, and we did this through the ethical framework of the AKDN. So ethics and values such as compassion and sharing, such as education, um, such as inclusiveness, um, really taking those values and communicating AKDN's work through those values. So that was a big daunting task in front of us. And so I worked with a team of architects and designers and developers and content strategists uh, to bring all this to life in the form of a physical exhibit. From a UX perspective, I actually did end up working on a lot of the aspects of the exhibit from giving feedback on the spatial design part of things to actually designing the life-size panels that would be read by members of the Jamaat, communicating those values uh, by designing a physical map game that involved magnets. Um, that was something that we saw really appeal to both parents and children um, to the experience around the virtual reality part of it as well, which really appealed to children, uh, to an interactive app um, that was also part of the exhibit where you scan the panels and you get more information such as videos and extra articles if you wanted to dive deeper into the epic. So really worked on this full 360 degree experience. And it was a really great experience because um, it allowed me to exercise different muscles of UX design and expand breadth, but also be able to give back uh, to the community using these skills. 
That's so interesting to hear. Um, ethics in action seems like one of your passion projects, but I understand that you have more passion projects. Do you mind speaking about one of them? Sure. So I have been a member and board of directors for a nonprofit organization called Personal Inc. And uh, we started this back in 2012 when I was actually um, working as an intern at my first ad agency. Um, this was a project that was very special because the whole idea was to improve the experience for breast cancer survivors after a mastectomy. Uh, and it was actually brought to me by my director because his sister-in-law was going through um, some decision-making after receiving her mastectomy surgery around her reconstruction options. So we realized that there was an opportunity in this area to really focus on helping cancer survivors and cancer patients heal after the surgery because that doesn't necessarily mean the end of the journey. And there's a lot of resources focused on, um, on that cancer process already. So how can we help women heal? So we ended up putting some design inspirations up on Pinterest. So as a UX designer, I actually did a lot of the strategy and organization for um, how we give that information. And we ended up turning this into a physical event where we connect breast cancer survivors with tattoo artists um, and they come together for a day of healing. And it's such a beautiful experience. We um, really got involved in planning that day at the very at the very detailed level, everything from how we're connecting them to the tattoo artist to how we're greeting them when they enter that shop because it's not just any experience, it is a healthcare experience. And so um, having that empathy as well during that experience and understanding what their needs are at that time became very important. Um, today, we have uh, a pink day, which is what we call um, for these physical events. And we have them all over North America every October um, in celebration of, of this healing aspect of cancer. Our final question is, what are skills that someone may need to enter UX and what are the first steps that someone should take while entering the field? The first steps into UX design, um, there's a lot of things that you can do. It's not a traditional field or uh, not a straight pathway, such as going to med medical school to become a doctor. Um, there are a lot of different pathways that you can take, but here are some tips and suggestions. First is read up as much as you can. Um, that involves books, that involves articles, some of the books that I really like um, as someone starting out new in the field is um, The Design of Everyday Things by Don Norman. About Face by Alan Cooper, and Designing for Interaction by Dan Saffer. Those are some really great starters. I would also say um, some really great websites and resources out there to read blogs and articles, uxdesign.cc, and also Smashing Magazine. I would also say take those courses, um, whether that's a certification program or whether that's a more um, longer term program. There are a lot of schools out there that do offer great programs in design and technology. Some of them, um, at least the people that I know in the field right now, have gone to the following schools. They've gone to Parsons, the new school. They've gone to SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design, RISD, Rhode Island School of Design. Um, they've also gone to Georgia Tech, Parsons, the new school for design, um, and then also the school I went to, the School of Interactive Arts and Technology at Simon Fraser University in Vancouver, also a really great program. Um, a lot of people that I know who have graduated there are doing really great things in, in the field as well. Um, lastly, I would say better yourself and really just be open and curious and in new ways 
thinking of new ways to really engage with the field, um, new ways of doing things, and also in connecting and interacting with other people. So mentorship is super important. In this case, find someone that you really admire, find someone um, who wants to see um, the best for you, and also networking in the field. So there are a couple of great organizations, the Interaction Design Organization, as well as the Service Design Network. They have great conferences and they also have really great online community where they have events. A lot of them are virtual nowadays, so definitely take advantage of that. And um, a lot of great resources and job boards. There's, there's a whole community there as well. So just get engaged in the community uh, and be open and, and curious. And that's what I would recommend. Asmina, thank you so much for your time. And thank you for joining us today. Stay tuned to The Ismaili for future episodes where we will be hearing from leaders in different fields of work to learn about how their industries are shaped by the future world. Thank you and dealing with it.